Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Okay, guys. So this is from Three Body Problem. This is the opening scene of the Cultural Revolution based on historical happenings that happened in China in the not-too-distant past. And history is getting ready to repeat itself again. It's a mess. It is a mess. And what we have to realize is what you're seeing here was that takeover by the communists. Um, the same playbook is always kind of in effect. And you'll have one rebirth of the system in apparently a different way, uh, apparently and sold as a, a new direction. Just simply do the same thing it always does, which is, again impose its will on the masses by you well you're gonna need a scapegoat so you know you point out one group one bunch of people and use them as a scapegoat get anger stirred hatred and then they utilize force uh to come down on all that would actually uh, go against the power structure that is, is resting control. Humanity's been brainwashed one time after another, after another, after another. And, you know, the sad fact is that people keep falling for it time and time again. Uh, again, three-body problem, uh, eight, eight uh, little, about 45, 50-minute segments, I think, in, in this year's. It was uh, a very interesting show, to say the least, because here we start out with the Chinese Revolution and end up with uh, alien invasion impending. Who would have thunk it? Well, it's it's a very curious movie. I would feel if you are an EE Arts watcher, this is something that should be required watching. You know, and when you look to her, this student here taking part and kind of leading this segment, um, of the shaming of people that weren't wanting to go along with the revolution. Uh, you look at her eyes, they kind of glisten with like a red demonic glow, and they're doing that purposely, but history repeats itself. These are actual uh, photos of the events that are depicted in the miniseries there. And yeah, absolutely. You know, again, it's all about the ego and it's all about sales. This is what they do. They sell humans. They sell them that, you know, your work is not in vain. Your struggle is against tyranny. And then they give them more struggle, more tyranny, and things even get worse. Time after time after time, in so many ways, History repeats itself as you're looking at, again, these are real pictures of this period in time. And whether we're looking at communist China or we're looking at Nazi Germany, it's the same indoctrination. It's the same system. And they brainwash the youth and they get them to buy into certain belief sets and ideals and utilize their energy. As you see, you know, they portray a person as the great father figure. Ah, yes. You know, then I think of people that have said in comments, I don't have any divine mother. I only have a divine father in heaven. And I think, well, they really don't have a clue as to anything, anything. Uh, just, again, the blind being led by the blind, which are being led by diabolical forces that they put on pedestals and revere. And these are actual photos. And then a lot of people met their demise with the change of power. In fact, tens of millions uh, easily, maybe hundreds of millions literally met their demise again we only know that which we see in the history books the history books are written and rewritten by the victors time and time again and it's always the use of force it's the same thing it's the same thing we see time and time and time again here you have george washington university and gaza solidarity encampment 
protesters held a People's Tribunal where they put President uh, Ellen Granberg, Provost Christopher Bracey, the Board of Trustees, uh, George Washington Police, and many others on trial. And, you know, here are as they're calling out names and then saying, um, guilty, and then off to the gallows with you. And it starts, you know, in a kind of jesting way, but that's just the start. And yeah, I mean, absolutely, when we see the system, we realize that there are atrocities being done. And, you know, you should never justify a genocide. Absolutely not. And, you know, or condone a genocide because of another genocide. No, that shouldn't happen either. But then you shouldn't also uh, forgive any one group for atrocities because, you know, that group has been at the other end of the atrocities at some point in time. All of humans, all, all groups on the planet need to start looking uh, at humanity as a whole instead of allowing itself to be separated because this is exactly how the divide and conquer works time and time and time again and yes uh there's an awful lot of people that we would like to see up on trial uh you know gil bates and and the whole crew after that uh but what happens is the power struggle and the wars that come create the conditions that an awful lot of average people that you've never heard their names disappear. They're gone for good. And you've never even heard their names. You'll never even will hear their names. But when we talk about tens of millions of people or hundreds of millions of people disappearing, they're not all celebrities. They're not all leaders. They're not all stars. They're not all parts of any sort of uh, political structure or necessarily any military structure. They're just people that the system finds um, difficult to deal with. And this is really what the system does. The system will sacrifice some of its own. It absolutely will sacrifice some of its own to further its agenda. So, you know, here, you know, again, uh, I'll give you guys the links. You can listen to them, you know, off to the gallows with you. And then when you have the leadership or some of the past leadership which could be again part of the leadership on a public stage but still all puppets uh putting out well well what do, what do you feel with this terrible persecution and you know that we've all read it we've studied it he's here i'm going to go back a little farther let's start right about here If it's going to let me. There, let's refresh this. Because this is important to um, really hear. Because. Us working together to extract the hateful poison of anti Semitism from our world. This was an anti Semitic attack at its worst. The scourge of anti-Semitism cannot be ignored, cannot be tolerated, and it cannot be allowed to continue. We can't allow it to continue. It must be confronted and condemned everywhere. It rears its very ugly head. We must stand with our Jewish brothers and sisters to defeat anti-Semitism and vanquish the forces of hate. That's what it is. Through the centuries, the Jews have endured terrible persecution, and you know that. We've all read it, we've studied it, they've gone through a lot. And those seeking their destruction, we will seek their destruction. Did you catch that part? I mean, that is huge. Those seeking their destruction, he says they will seek their destruction. Studied it. They've gone through a lot. And those seeking their destruction, we will seek their destruction. 
And the people go along and cheer. And they've cheered for Mao. They've cheered for Stalin. They've cheered for, you know, Caesar. Uh, they, they would, you know, go ahead and cheer, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down for that gladiator. Did he give you a good enough performance? And the people cheered. You know, it goes on and on. It's, it's recognizing this for what it is. It, again, these belief systems, they're in their last days. And it's only a few handful of years probably away before it's known that these belief systems, um, there's just, they're a relic. They're a relic of a past age, and they were only used for divisive purposes. When you understand that there are galactic brothers and sisters, that there is also uh, a galactic system out there and in place, a multidimensional system, you know, all these you know, belief systems that were seated on planet Earth are going to be proven to be based really on just the art of deception. It is. It's um, something that's so unfortunate because they they find someone that people really, really legitimately look up to. And regardless of what that person says, they're, um, you know, people are just going to agree with them with, without giving it really much thought just because they, they trust them and they think that what they're doing is the right thing. And that's that's something that sh really should be watched and you can see that in some people's charts where they have a certain uh placement and that that placement indicates that if this person finds a teacher or a guru they should be very very careful because no matter what that teacher or guru does this person is going to like kneel down and worship them regardless, even if they just take them right off a cliff. And we, we can't do that anymore. We have to stop and look and see what we're doing and uh, make sure that we're doing having our belief systems for the right reasons, not because someone told them to us. Yeah, 1666, um, Sabatai Zevi converted to Islam and uh, well, I'm not sure if that was the exact year he converted to Islam. But again, the religions are nothing but a cover story. This is what they've always been, truly, if you really want to hold spirituality up to its, its highest level, then we have to understand the oneness behind all things and that there is an interconnection. There's, there's no one group that's held above any other group and source is within us all. Um, but this guy is an interesting one, uh, to say the least. Look at this, right? right this is Robert Seffer's book, 1666, Redemption Through Sin. Ah, yes, yeah. This is a story, again, of how religion can be used to further um, dark, dark, dark agendas. And so Sabbatai Zevi, let's read from Wiki here, was an Ottoman, they say Jewish mystic, ordained rabbi from Smyrna. He was likely of Ashkenazi origin. Active throughout the Ottoman Empire, he claimed to be the long-awaited Jewish messiah and found the Sabbatean movement. Upon arriving in Constantinople in February 1666, he was imprisoned on the order of the Grand Vizier. And in September of the same year, after being moved from different prisons around the capital to the imperial court seat in Adrianople, he was judged on accusations of fomenting sedition. He was given the choice of either facing death by some type of ordeal or convert to Islam. So he converted but not really because you know again to to these beings they they really they use this as as something uh to further their agenda again when you look well where is all the talk of the afterlife in 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 the torah it's not about the afterlife it's about getting ahead in this world right now in life during life it's not about the afterlife and, you know, you can look to the writings of the Talmud for some clarity. Again, when David is, is writing 
in the Talmud, um, the way that it's worded is he's talking to uh, the power that is in control of the universe. Instead of saying, like, oh, great creator of the universe, it's, it's oh, great conqueror of the universe. There's a huge difference there. The creator is not necessarily the conqueror. And the, this is really just a ruse. It's all been a ruse. And so, you know, again, his setting himself up as, you know, the Messiah. Oh, going to be a Messiah. Yeah, but you converted. Well, because he didn't want to lose this life because it's really all about this life. When we look again to ancient Judaism, there's interestingly very very little there about afterlife at all in fact you know again we get into uh things like the zohar and we get into the kabbalah to start deep diving because it's not in the torah no you know and and again the realization that the entity that you would call yahweh is just one of many uh, of these powerful beings that ruled the earth at one point in time openly and now just simply do it from the shadows mm. you know I, I i look to the egoic standpoint of it and sometimes i just don't know where all this ego comes from there there's people out there you know i do understand uh <clears throat> being able to channel these these other beings i i completely get that part but when someone sits down and says i am this i am this here in the flesh and blood and that's i am me that scares me that scares me channeling is one thing it's you're stepping into somebody's energy and you're taking on their essence and you're putting that information out through through your frequency but when someone stands there and just claims this information there's just something so chilling about it to me because i i know it's wrong it, there's something so so diabolical about this egoic nature it's not okay and it, it's this egoic nature that mike was talking about that wants to conquer you don't you don't create something just to conquer it a creator creates something and watches it unfold it watches it unravel it delights in seeing the newness of these things that that's about its creation so that's just my thoughts yeah as the creator of this universe uh, sets the conditions for life to abound and flourish steps back and watches it the creator of this universe doesn't move pieces back into certain places uh, because it, you know, it, it's it's not about ego, no. And and so, humanity's been brought up with the idea of a conquering, ruling, authoritarian force as being the highest form or expression of deity, and the, and it couldn't be anything farther from it. The the real creative force that's behind all of creation is one of love and allowing things to develop not forcing things to conform it's just you know that is purely satanic and diabolical in the biggest sense and again this is one of those distortions that most of the world just doesn't get mm -mm. no they don't and and you know as a consequence this energy continues on and it grows it's like a cancer it's like a mold it's it's something that's that's very very strong it wants to exist it's not good for the the growth or the entity of others it just wants things to conform in its shape and i i uh, i look at that and it's just something that really bothers me you know it's and like i said it's one thing to channel and have the the makeup and the ability to channel and bring in these energies and then say what the, the energy would say. But to claim you are that, there's just something not right there. It's, I think it's, you know, everything has flaws and maybe that's one of those flaws. So again, it's, it's mankind looking for a messianic figure. 
because they've been trained to look for a messianic figure and they've been indoctrinated to and time after time they choose in many cases some of the worst mass murderers you've ever seen because it's the control system and again now we have in our uh, schools of higher indoctrination because that's really what they are the same energies that were present uh, during the Maoist revolutions and, and also in Nazi Germany in the 30s again you're going to have these people welcoming uh, China as China takes over the US with Russia and we, even when you look at it closer, you can see that there's you know, a little bit more of a party affiliation, you know, on the left with one and then on the right with the other. And, you know, as the country gets split up and, you know, <laughs> you're going to have so many of these people welcoming in the conquerors. Hey, they welcomed Caesar in too. They were welcome them all in. And one after another, it's just been proven to be one atrocity after another. And when you're talking about messianic figures and, and bringing about nothing but death and destruction, ultimately, this is a lesson that needs to be learned. The Jews have endured terrible persecution, and you know that. We've all read it, we've studied it, they've gone through a lot. And those seeking their destruction, we will seek their destruction. You know, that, that says a lot. And then again, if you are going by what the Torah says and, you know, the Old Testament, there were a group of people called the Canaanites in Israel. What happened to them? <laughs> They were booted out of their own homes, their own territories. And so, you know, Israel began with per persecution. And here you go again. We, we had persecution again, kicking the people out of their homes again to put Israel there. This is just the system doing what it does. As ultimately, uh, this system is a warlike system that, interestingly enough, does come from Mars. Absolutely. You know, kind of live by the sword, die by the sword type type of scenario. And if you don't want that, do something different. You know, if we keep doing what we're doing, we're going to get what we've got. And what we, what we have now is just not working. Fool me once, fool me twice. As always, you could count on mother's love uh, instead of the warlike energies that this planet seems to thrive on in a dark age. Source bless. Namaste. Namaste.